Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Empyrean Galactic Survival Tutorials. My name is Rakuna and I'm Bart. So tell them what we're going to be talking about today, Bart. We're going to be talking about the end menu. I, I don't know if there's really a name for that. Uh, I, I don't think so. I don't see like an African name here. We'll, we'll just keep calling it the end menu. All right. Now, this mostly applies when building in creative mode. So I'm going to go over its features. So let's take them one by one. First of all, you go in the building tab. You have undo, redo, and lock. If I put a block here, I can press N and I can do undo, which is going to remove my last action. Another way to do this would be using Control Z. If I press redo, it's going to redo my last action. The last option is lock. The bottom here, I selected the container extensions, and this is the container extensions in which I applied a texture. If I do lock, all of the future blocks that I'm going to put are going to have that texture. If you go back into your end menu, you can always unlock it anytime. So first of all, let's control Z all of these blocks that I've placed. Now the next thing I'm going to be talking to you about is connect to defense outpost. Well, basically it's going to connect to the base that is currently selected. Now if I go here, I, I can't put any block unless it's connected to the base itself. If I click on this option, I'll be able to put some blocks away from the base and still be part of it. It's a good way to make a settlement with a few houses or buildings. The other option here is symmetry plane. Now in symmetry plane, you can set your XY, XZ, and YZ. Over here, I'm gonna set my XY. Let's put it in the middle. Here's my XZ. Let's leave it there. And my YZ. Let's put it in the middle here. Now, right now, imagine I wanted to build on this base. I would just wanna activate the XY and the YZ at the same time. That way, if I put a block here, it's appearing on all sides here. The same thing with that one. So basically, you place a block by left clicking and you can remove a block by shift right clicking. It'll remove the blocks on all axes. Now, when you place a block, depending on where your axis is, it's going to place itself on the opposite side exactly. Unless the current space is used or you don't have enough block or there is a block limit like the CPU extender improve. As you can see down here, it's got a maximum amount of two. So if I place one, it's going to place two, but it won't put it on the other side as well, since we already exceeded the maximum amount. You can also work with all of the axes if you wanted to, depending on the type of base you want to build. And this applies also to texturing. If I put a texture on here, it shows up on all of the other blocks that I've put down. Now, be warned, sometimes some of these texturing don't really work well, especially with corner pieces like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's not what I told you to do. Uh, but to fix those, all you gotta do is remove symmetry plane and you can just fix them manually afterward. As such, the other option here is selection. If you click on that and you press move selection, you can now select an area. As such, uh, the first option here is to move the selection. Now this one is acting all wonky. Usually this is this is supposed to appear right next to the block, but yeah, you know, Imperium it has its bugs sometimes. Now with the arrows here, you can move your selection. If you use the two arrows, it's to drag. You just click and drag the selection wherever you want. Now you can do this on all axes, like this, and like this. Now, if you want to expand your selection, you got to go through this option, scale selection. With this, you can scale the selection you want to have. Again, the one dot for one block at a time, or you can always scale with the two blocks that are connected together. Now to show you the last option here, which is to rotate, you're gonna have to use these options below. Imagine I have a selection over here and I expand it. I'm gonna select that little area of lock right there. Now the first option here is copy or control C. The next one is paste or control V. Once the area is green like that, it gives you the option to move that selection. And once I'm ready to place it, I can press paste again. Now I can paste this as many times as I want until I select something else to copy. As such, I have to show you the rotation feature. I've placed my item here. If I select rotate, I can rotate on every axis. As such, when I'm ready, I just press paste again. So basically, the first time you paste, it only gives you a ghost of what you've copied. It's only when you press paste again that the object is truly there. Now the third option here is cut. What it's gonna do is gonna remove the selection from its place and be kept in memory until you paste it somewhere else. Like that. 
fourth option here is delete or control D which is just going to delete the selection. Now, if you want to start your selection again, all you got to do is press this fifth option, remove selection or control R. Now the sixth option here is fill selection or control F. Now what I did here is I selected this and I copy and what I could do is then scale as high as I want. And I could do fill selection and all of that is going to be filled in with trust blocks or whichever item you want to select at first at the beginning. Now that looks kind of weird, so let's just delete it. Now let's make a new selection. I'm going to select this little turret area and then what I could do here in this option is save to list and I could give it a name, turret. As you can see, this has been saved into a list down below. So if you know you're going to be using an item or a little selection here pretty much around your base, you can always save it there and you can bring it up anytime. So whenever I need to copy this, all I could do is go here to set selection blueprint part. Now I can easily copy and paste it anywhere around the base as I see fit. It's just an easy way to save a selection area. Now if I messed up in my selection area, I could always redo another selection like here. I'm going to remove the turret from that option and I could just do here, replace. So when I click set selection to blueprint part, it's going to select only this block now. All right, so let's deselect everything. Now you got this little option here, which shows blueprint parts. I imagine that if I had many selections already saved down here, it would light up all of the parts over here. You can delete all of your blueprint parts anytime as such, or you can rename this with this option here so much information Rakuna. yeah that's okay but i mean there's a lot of builders out there who do a lot of building in creative mode but they might not know all of these little tricks i just told i'm sure that'll come in handy for these guys well i'm sure it will i mean i, I just freaking fiddle around in it and i learned some new stuff myself so why not share the information right yeah that's pretty cool so what the hell is going on with that second tab oh you mean you mean debug yeah well, that I'll get to that right away. So while I'm building a ship or a base or anything, this option is quite useful. Right now, I have the Xerxes in front of me. Now, the first option here shows the center of mass. This blue dot represents the middle of my ship, but the center of mass is a little behind here, shown by the yellow dot. As you can see, at least it's right in the middle, so the side thrusters will not be affected by this. It's just saying that the ship is heavier on the back. If you really need to, you can always adjust this with artificial mass blocks. It'll improve your flight and hover behavior. The other option here is show structural integrity. Now on ship and space stations and hover tanks, you don't have that option. But on bases that are grounded, that plays a pivotal role. As you can see, as I go higher in the base, the structural integrity is decreasing slightly. Now if I were to add some blocks here, eventually that will turn bright red and will not let me put any more blocks. So when it's bright red like this, usually that means that the block is gonna fall structural integrity is at zero uh, right now it's just because i'm in creative mode that's why it doesn't fall so if you ever wonder why your base is collapsing it's because of structural integrity to fix that you can just connect that to the ground and there you go structural integrity is sound again the third option here in the debug menu is show oxygen if you're building a space station or a base or a, a ship, there's a lot of places that you're going to go to that won't have any oxygen. So it's important that you have oxygen in the base or the ship you're building. Now, when you press show oxygen, it'll show you if the air is breathable. As you can see here, inside of my ship, there's oxygen everywhere. But you got to make sure to have your ventilator set and you got to make sure your ship is airtight. Now, I'm going to click on airtight blocks. This shows you pretty much what is airtight. What I did is I removed a couple of glass panes here. <laughs> and as you can see, now it's wide open. And there's no more oxygen inside the ship. Well, I mean, I am on an oxygen planet, so it doesn't really count. Yeah, imagine if our ships really looked like that from the outside. Like a Minecraft Empyrean. That would be totally awful. So when building a building or a ship, just make sure that everything is closed off. I'm just going to close this off. I know it's not the original blocks, but at least you'll see the oxygen come back in. There you go. <laughs> Minecraft ship, that would look totally ugly, man. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, guys, I hope you learned something today, and I'll be looking for some more content to do. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, don't forget to nudge that little like button, and happy building. So, until next time, take care, and stay safe. Rakuna out. Bart out.